So as Aksa said that the topic of my thesis is a parallelized reporter screen to uncover tissue specific splicing, activator and repressor sequences in a multicellular organism. So alternative splicing is a co and post transcription process through which a single gene can code for structurally and functionally distinct protein variants. And an, and an exotic example of uh, this process is the DSCAM gene in Drosophila, which is Down syndrome cell adhesion molecule. And it's really interesting as it has these four clusters of alternate exons and mostly one exon is retained from each of these clusters, which uh, leads to approximately 38,000 different variants. And then a lot of these variants further go on to code for different proteins, which are expressed on the cell surface of these neurons and are involved in neuronal self-avoidance, which is very crucial during development. So much like transcription, um, alternative splicing is also regulated through some motifs and then some factors binding to these motifs. So the motifs are present in pre-mRNA and they are called cis elements and they are recognized and bound by RNA binding proteins or the trans factors. And together they gov govern spliceosome recruitment. So if they promote spliceosome recruitment and increase the inclusion of corresponding exon, we call them activators. And if they do the opposite, we call them repressors. However, alternative splicing regulation is like it always gets regulated in a context dependent manner. So the regulation varies uh, even of the same events, it can vary in a cell specific manner, in a tissue specific manner. And it has also been um, shown uh, to come under many other layers, like it varies according to developmental stages and so on. So a lot of studies have been done to explore these assist elements and massively parallel reporter assays are the most common ones now. So in this assay, uh, people usually take a minimal gene fragment. So over here, it's a cassette exon. It'll either be included or excluded from the final isoform. And then they also introduce uh, random sequences or random elements uh, in this minimal uh, gene fragment. And then the, this element is tested for its uh, regulatory potential on basically how it's controlling the splicing of this alternate exon. And then millions of such vectors can be constructed. And then they are usually dumped into cell cultures. and then after RNA sequencing, isoform ratios are predicted for each of these uh, reporters. So as these are majorly done in cell cultures, and as I just said that alternative splicing is regulated in a highly context dependent manner, such screens might not be able to uh, capture the input from all these uh, regulatory layers. So the question is, can we come up with something which can also include the input from these regulatory layers? and ultimately help us to identify the cis elements. And then all this can be done in a very systematic and organized manner. So for this, we have done an adaptation of massively parallel reporter assay. So we call it parallel reporter assay. We have just reduced the size of libraries. We introduce these libraries into C. elegans. And why C. elegans is a suitable organism of choice? Because first of all, it has different types of tissues and uh, alternative splicing in C. elegans also is regulated uh, in a tissue differential and a cell differential manner. And the most important po point is that multiple plasmids can be maintained as stable extra chromosomal arrays. So the questions which we can address through this screen is how alternative splicing regulation varies from tissue to tissue. And then what insights can these cis elements give us into the different mechanisms through which the process is regulated in a context dependent manner. So as I said, that it all starts from a minimal gene fragment. So this is how we started in our lab. We had this UNC16 mini gene with a cassette exon, which is either included or excluded. And we knew that it is under, the splicing is under the control of these two cis elements, which are bound by these two RBPs. So we mutated these cis elements and we saw a sudden reduction or, uh, in the inclusion of this alternate exon. And basically percent exon inclusion value is just a measure of it. It, it is a measure of splice and isoforms in the total isoform population. So then we took this reference reporter or the mutant reporter and then introduced a random tenmer upstream of these mutated sites. Now this tenmer was uh, being tested for its regulatory potential. And each of this tenmer, which I'll just refer to as a cis element or a potential cis element, is paired with a barcode, which is downstream of exon three or is pretty much the part of the exon three. So as a cis element would be spliced out, 
but barcode would be retained because it's part of exon. So we just use barcodes to identify the cis elements from which the isoforms are coming. So, so many of these um, reporters can then be constructed. So we had uh, a library size of 4,000 such vectors. We have unique cis element and barcode pairs. And then these were injected into C elegans, and then we can recover RNA, perform RNA seq, and then I perform data analysis. So I just uh, count these different isoforms originating from different reporters, and then I just plug them into this formula of percent exon inclusion value, and then calculate uh, the splice in uh, species um, in the total isoform population. So uh, I've been using this reference reporter or the mutant reporter as the control, so this lacks any decamer. And if uh, the splicing is increased after introduce, introduction of this tenmer, we call that tenmer an activator. And if the inclusion is further decreased, we call it a repressor. So like this, I've been able to identify approximately 477 pairs of these elements. So you can see over here that there is a reference reporter or the mutant reporter with uh, only 21.6% of splice in, uh, isoforms in the total isoform population. However, I have these activators which are increasing the inclusion and these repressors over here. So after we found out all these reporters, we thought of um, validating them through a different experimental approach. So a few of these reporters were selected and then individually injected into C. elegans. And then I just performed RT-PCR and I selectively enriched for uh, the isoforms coming from my reporters. So as you can see on the gel, the first band corresponds to spliced and variant and the second band is the spliced out variant. So over here, the repressors, which are in blue, we can see that how the included band is not that intense or not that bright. Whereas the skipped out band is uh, so much more bright. And in the case of activators, uh, the opposite is true, or if the included variant is not that bright, it's equally uh, intense. So I calculated uh, percent exon inclusion densitometry values using these gel band intensities, and then I compared these uh, values obtained from two different analyses. And I used a linear regression model for this, and I obtained a very high positive correlation coefficient for these. So this just uh, tells us that the system is indeed robust. Now, once I had identified these PRA elements, I further wanted to see like how or why they are resulting in such activity. So I thought of performing this bioinformatic analysis and the goal of this analysis was to characterize smaller six to, one, uh, six to seven more sequences within these PRA elements as that's the size of sequence uh, to which an RBP or a transfactor binds. And then I also tried to test for uh, the synthetic element overlaps in the native uh, sequence space. This would just place them in a broader biological context. So the first analysis which I did was matching these PRA elements with putative RNA binding protein motifs. And for this, I used RNA compete and encode data set. And then for second analysis, I tried to match the map these PRA elements to genome sequences. And the data which I used uh, is the data which has been generated in our lab, which is C. elegans tissue specific RNA profiling data. And it has all those events which are alternatively spliced and it's very well annotated. And then uh, the third uh, analysis is the conservation analysis where I'm trying to see how, if my PRA elements are indeed present in the native sequence phase, then how well are they conserved? Because if something has a regulatory role, uh, it should be well conserved. So for this, I've used Motivo. And yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of things are going on this slide, but I'll just gradually walk you through it. So over here is the exon. Over here are, uh, is the upstream intron and downstream intron. Now the graph which you are seeing on the left, the X axis just shows us the distance from the three prime splice site. So this is the splice site, which is zero on graph, and then plus 10, plus 20, these are just like the base pairs, the distance from the splice site. So uh, usually it said like the closer a particular cis element to the splice site, the more impact it will have on splicing. So that's why we had, uh, we were looking for enrichment of my PR elements within, the, within 50 base pairs, uh, of the splice site. And then on y-axis, you are seeing the conservation scores, which, are, which, which have been generated from motivo analysis. So higher uh, a motif or uh, like higher the marker, it means it's very well conserved. So this is how each marker is. Uh, first of all, it tells us the gene, 
to which my PRA element was matched, and then what motif, uh, what RBP motif is present in my PRA element. So this is uh, all we could see. We could uh, see that PR elements are indeed highly conserved in native sequence space. They, uh, some of them are in close proximity of the splice site. And yes, so uh, to some extent, I could actually validate or like understand how my PR elements are acting this way. And then the potential future directions uh, can be, uh, so now I have found out these uh, different genes which have uh, a lot of PRA elements enriched in them. Now I'll just uh, be taking, let's say top five of these, and then I'll try to see if I can predict splicing patterns of these native mini genes by using the data from my PRA reporter essay. So if I have a PRA element in one of these mini genes, maybe I can mutate it and see how the splicing is being affected. And then this is just an example of how sites are present on the mini gene and um, which motif is present in my PRA element. And then on much similar lines, I've also generated a catalog for muscle tissue. And now I'll be comparing these two, uh, mus uh, two tissue specific catalogs of cis elements. And I'd be finding some common elements, whereas I'll also be finding some uh, elements which are only functional in either one type of tissue or the other. So this would, this parallelized reporter screen will lead to elucidation of tissue specific differential splicing patterns in a highly systematic manner. Thanks, and I'll be happy to take any questions.